Hello, and welcome to another GEMDS training video. In this video, we will be covering static NAT, also known as one-to-one -one NAT, over an IPsec VPN tunnel. This video is part five of a multi-part series of IPsec videos. If you have not yet viewed the previous videos, please do so now. Let's first talk about why you would need to configure static NAT. Let's say you have an existing network that has a single subnet and you wish to install an Orbit IPsec VPN tunnel between the devices. One option would be to reassign IP addresses to those devices, but that would waste time. Instead, you can have the Orbit act as a router over the IPsec tunnel, NATing the addresses. This allows you to drop the Orbit IPsec tunnel in place without any changes to the existing infrastructure. The only thing that changes is your destination IP address. This method can be used on a specific address or an entire subnet of addresses. In our example, we have an existing subnet of 10.15.63.128/26 on both sides of the tunnel. As the orbit acts as a router, you would never be able to reach the other side as your device would not send its traffic to the default gateway, which in this case is the orbit MCR. This is due to the fact that your device would be trying to send its traffic to a device within its subnet. To get around this, we can map an entire subnet to another subnet. In this case, on the left side, we will send all of our traffic to 192.168.63.128/26, and on the right side, we will send all of its traffic to 192.169.63.128/26. These addresses map the subnets one-to-one, -one, hence the name one-to-one -one NAT. For example, if I'm a device connected to the left orbit, and I'm trying to get to a device with an IP of 10.15.63.181, which is connected to the right orbit, instead of sending my packets to 10.15.63.181, I will send them to 192.168.63.181, as they are directly mapped. Let's look at how to configure this. The first thing you will want to do is log in. Next, you will click on Services. Then scroll down and select VPN. As you can see, we already have our Ike and IPsec settings configured. This was done in previous videos. This video will only cover the differences needed to configure static NAT. First, let's go into IPsec. Then we'll edit our previously created connection. The three important parameters on this screen are remote IP subnets, local IP subnet, and local IP NAT subnet. In a normal IPsec tunnel configuration, you would simply fill in the remote IP subnets and local IP subnet. But in this case, we would have a conflict as both the remote IP subnets and local IP subnet are the same exact subnet. In order to get around this conflict, we will create a virtual subnet for the IPsec tunnel. In this case, just to make it easy, let's call it 192.168.63. 26. Then press update or add. Now because we're creating a virtual subnet in the IPsec tunnel, we can no longer leave our local IP subnet in that field. Instead, we'll enter that into the local IP NAT subnet. So enter that now. Now for our local IP subnet, we'll create a second virtual IP subnet for the tunnel. Again, to make it easy, let's just call this 192.169.63.128.26. Now you'll want to save your configuration. Now let's take a look at the other orbit. Again, we'll log in. Then go to Services. Then scroll down, select VPN. 
then IPsec, then the connection that we wish to edit, Now here, we're going to invert the remote IP subnets and the local IP subnet. We'll type 192.168.63.128.26. And again, for the local IP net subnet, we'll enter our, lo our old local IP subnet. And now for the local IP subnet, we'll enter 192.168.63.128.26. Then we'll save our configuration. And the configuration is now complete. Just to be clear, let's take a look at those subnets again. Here we have the remote IP subnets are .169 and .168 for the local. On the other, it's .168 for the remote and .169 for the local. So make sure that those are inverted. Let's do a little test of our configuration. We're going to open the CLI and ping a device on the other side of the other orbit. But instead of using the direct IP, as that wouldn't work, we'll actually use the 192.169.63.181. That gets mapped to 10.15.63.181. As you can see, the pings are successful. Thank you for watching another GEMDS training video. For more information, please see our other training videos and check out our website at gemds.com.